All right, today we're going to look at the Helio board and try to thread the needle between hype and reality. Okay, so I had a couple people contact me asking for some help on tuning their Helio spring board. They were having jello and mid throttle oscillation issues. So I started taking a look at the filtering, and if you're not aware, and I guess before I go into this, I'm not going to talk about the specific features of the board. Joshua Bardwell did a good review of that. I'm going to kind of get into the weeds a little bit more on the filtering. So if you're not aware, uh, the Helio Springboard only works with Butterflight. Uh, so that's the firmware that you would, you would have to use, download Butterflight, uh, configurator, so on and so forth, if you're getting a Helio board. And, you know, some of the team members on Helio are also on the Butterflight team, so they work very closely together. The Helio has a proprietary closed source filtering algorithms, and the filtering occurs inside one of the processors where the PID loop and the Butterflight runs in a separate processor. What that enables them to do is kind of split the load so you can get up to 32, true 32, 32K gyro and PID loop frequencies. In their proprietary filtering uh, scheme, it's using it's based on the common filter. So you have Q gains for each access, whereas in Butterflight uh, open source for any other flight controller, you don't have Q gains for each access. You just have Q in general. So each access you have a different Q gain. R is supposedly dynamic, so that moves around. I'm a little fuzzy on why you have to set Q if R is dynamic, but hey, whatever. It's proprietary. I don't need to know as long as it works well. And you do have the uh, dynamic gain as well, which is W, uh, which has some values. If a W is less than 100, it's the uh, new old dynamic Coleman. If W is greater than 100, as it's documented here, it's an alternative new, new dynamic Coleman. There's also a low pass filter. Uh, I'm not sure if this is a bi quad filter, which is a second order low pass filter, or if it's a PT1 type filter, which is a first order, which has um, less attenuation, but not as much latency either. So that's settable from 0 to 500 hertz. And that's what you have. So essentially you have two low pass filters in series. What these specific gentlemen were having issues with in both cases, and they're independent uh, cases, is the filtering uh, was not hitting their peak motor noise. So with a Helio board uh, and Butterfly, the combination of the two, you can get black box logs, but you cannot see the raw gyro noise. There is no, the debug modes to see raw gyro noise just don't work with a Helio board. Which, it'd be nice to see for filter tuning since you do have to tune the dynamic filters it has. Which I'd prefer dynamic filters like the dynamic notch where you just turn them on or off. That's, that's the best kind of tuning, right? Just turn it on. It does, it's dynamic. Just do the rest, right? But anyways, um, but you can see the output data here by looking at your gyro outputs. Now this is the gyro data that's passed then from one processor to the next where Butterflight's doing all the PID calculations so on and so forth. So if we look at this and we look at the peak, uh, the motor noise I guess for the pitch and roll on this specific log, and I'm not going to go through the three or four logs I, I received from these guys, you can see we still have those motor spikes coming through. And to me, if you've watched the last video, not that surprising. Two low pass filters in series just don't have enough cut to really hit high peak motor noise or even reasonable peak motor noise. So it's going to break through. That's why I think the uh, recommendation for a dynamic notch is appropriate uh, if you have high peak motor noise or just normal peak motor noise. Uh, Butterflight, that's in their recommendation as well, but with Helio, all the notch filters, statics and dynamic on the gyro, are not an option. Their hex does not allow those to be enabled. There's specific hex for the Helio board. Now there is a D-term notch that is available, uh, but that only helps with the D-term. As you can see that D-term notch is here. So what's happening with Jello is if you go look at the P-term for each of these axes, you can see that P-term is amplifying any of that gyro noise. So for a sense of how much noise this is when I 
click on this, and I'm not messing with the axis, the uh, attenuation axis here at all, the uh, amplitude. So you can see that doesn't look that high of a peak, but you can see how the P term amplifies that. So let's just go look at, at my rig here, because I have a decent amount of noise. So if I'm looking at my, my raw noise from my copter, you can see this is peak amplitude up here, so it's a pretty big spike. But with the dynamic notch, bam, it slaps that sucker down. And as a result, when I go to my P trace, it doesn't really amplify it because there's nothing really there to amplify. Where going back to this one, uh, you can see then again that P term is really amplifying. And that's what's causing their jello. Unfortunately, I didn't really have a fix. These guys were all soft mounted. They were diff trying different filtering settings. The Q, uh, what the, going over the Helio Slack and, and talking with some guys, they were recommending that they set a Q to 9,000 or 12,000 and a W, coming back to this, and a W to 116, which would be the alternate dynamic Kalman. And the gentleman said that that didn't help. Uh, There's three guys that said that that didn't help. So they're kind of stuck there. I guess what the latest recommendation is to change the low pass filter to sit right on top of the, to have the cutoff right on top of your peak that you're trying to attenuate. They need to try it. I haven't gotten reports back on that yet. Uh, it doesn't make sense to me, just going back to the, you know, the graph of a low pass filter. This is the attenuation slope line uh, for a first order or a PT1 filter, you're getting three decibels of attenuation at the cutoff, whereas you can see if you set this at 100 hertz and you have a peak at say 250, you're going to get negative 10 decibels of attenuation. So moving this out is not going to give you more attenuation, it's going to give you less. I thought kind of the same thing with rig and the Q higher, but hey, it's their software, you got to follow the, their, you know, their recommendations. So I think these gentlemen are still trying to troubleshoot that, I just wanted really to do this video to um, draw it to attention so people know this going into their personal decision. I was kind of surprised that the dynamic filter was not an available option. And honestly, if there's enough interest uh, by people buying the Helio board to enable that and let Butterflight do some additional gyro filtering downstream of where the Helio uh, proprietary software leaves off and passes the data, that you know where there's a will, there's a way. It's just computer codes. It's all just ones and zeros. They can make it happen if they want to. So that was another part of this as well. If you do get this board, do check out the frequently asked questions. Then in there, there's a how do I tune this thing? And there's a video on tuning it. The gentleman in there does say he's not a tuning expert, which I thought was kind of funny, but do check it out. He's a Helio board. I think Helio thinks he's doing a pretty good job. He's probably just being modest. And then also do check out this uh, tuning flow chart. So I think this is a, a pretty cool flow chart to kind of simplify things. I'm not sure about all the recommendations. Some don't like mid throttle oscillations is because you're, you know, at mid throttle you're, uh, which doesn't, you know, what is mid throttle, right? Exactly, it doesn't mean that. It means somewhere on the throttle curve or on your throttle position stick, your motors are resonating with your frame. That's what that means. And, or electrical noise is, is hitting a certain, uh, spot there at like 75% uh, throttle it seems like that's when you get the most electrical noise uh, based on some tests I'm seeing out there. Anyways, um, they're saying raise the D term. I don't see how that's going to help with that or raise Q which I thought higher Q's mean less more more trust if you go back uh, to the filter recommendations say higher Q's mean more trust in the gyro data. I would think with MTOs you want less trust. It's not good data. But um, nevertheless, do check this out and try them at least and go from there. I'm not sure if the uh, desire to have notch filters will be allowed or added back in. I get the sense from uh, the race flight guys that have come over and the Helio guys, which are a part of that team, is that they don't really like notch filters. They think it makes choppy data, I guess. Um, I'm not seeing that in black box logs as much, but that's their opinion. And so I'm not sure, I guess I would still would love to see that they would allow for it to be enabled, but recommend it not be enabled or used. 
Uh, when you are using the Helio and Butterfly, this is your filtering option, so you can see the Q on the different axes. For the W and the low pass, you need to use the CLI, so refer to those CLI commands. And again, you do have the D-turn low pass filter. I think the default is bi-quad, uh, and I think that's the recommendation too. Now it has a steeper cut, it's a second uh, order filter, but it has twice the latency of a first order filter. It has more than twice, it's like 1.5 times the latency of a so I'm, I was a little surprised to see that as the um, as the recommendation, and it does allow for a notch filter on the D term. I did want to try to clear up then to some miscommunication or maybe it's marketing stuff in regard to speed and latency and and how things work. There's a fundamental difference between phase delay of filtering and processing speed or amount of samples you're sending and the time interval in between those samples. So just to, to brief on this, and this is universal across all flight controller software, phase delay is basically how the signal from the gyro gets altered and distorted because of the filtering approach itself in the mathematics. So in this graphic, what we have here is a blue line. That's the ideal signal. The gray lines, which you probably can maybe hardly see in the recording, that's adding noise to this blue signal. Then in this test, they were applying filters to that noisy signal to see the performance of the filters. The distance between the blue line here and the red line, which is a PT1 filter, is the phase delay. So that, you know, you might be taking a gajillion samples, you know, 32K, you're taking a sample here, a sample here, a sample here, 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 all the way up through here. That has nothing to do, the frequency of those samples has nothing to do with that. The real motion is here and the gyro output data is saying it's way over here. That's what phase delay is. So looking at a practical sense, this is gyro data, unfiltered gyro data, pre-notch, and you can see the, the noise in it, the squiggly wigglies. And at this specific point in time, you can see that there is a distinct change in slope here of the data. And that gets shifted back through the filtering. So at this point in time, what we can look at in phase delay is that the gyro is really moving at a rotation of 182 degrees per second, but after the filter and the output, it's saying it's only moving at 165 degrees per second, and that persists. So if I go to here, it's 184, now it's 169, and that persistent wrong data is being sent because of the filtering. So you'd think, well, let's just turn off all the filtering. That would be great, except you'd smoke a motor and have jello like you couldn't believe because of all the noise. Hence, if you can get the noise out from, if you can get some motors that don't produce noise, you're going to be having a great performing quad, but unfortunately that's not the world we live in. So that phase delay, as you can see this jut right here, so if I do a marked point, I hold down Alt and hit the right arrow a couple times, I get to about there. You can see the phase delay is about two milliseconds right now, two to three milliseconds, depending on where, what, what point I pick. So that's a two to three millisecond phase delay at this specific uh, point in the flight with the filtering that's turned on at the time and so on and so forth. So that's what we're talking about phase delay. So keep that in mind, two to three milliseconds, whole numbers, two or three milliseconds. Now let's pop over to here. At 32K sampling, you are reading the data from the gyro every point zero 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 three one two five seconds or point zero point zero three one two five milliseconds point zero six for 16k you can see the rest so when we're looking at filtering to me why is filtering so important because three milliseconds it, to focus on getting that number down is a heck of a lot more important than focusing on getting this number down especially when you're looking at it that, and I haven't peer reviewed this, but a lot of guys are saying that, hey, motors can't update any more, any faster than 10 milliseconds. Why is this so important when you're for filtering? And it's like, well, 
I'm not talking about up rate, update speed uh, when I'm talking about phase delay. I'm talking about you know phase delay and filtering means it's manipulating the signal so much that just like I showed that the rotational angle it's feeding the PID loop is wrong. That's what's the problem. And that differential in when, well, when is it right? It's like I showed, two to three milliseconds wrong in time, like two to three milliseconds later, then it will actually be giving it the correct data. And that two to three milliseconds in prop wash, that's a problem. When we're talking frequency and update frequency, PID loops, gyro loops, so on and so forth, and we're saying, hey, motors can only update at 10 milliseconds. That means we are feeding the gyro data and PID loop data 320 times faster than the motors can even update, or 116 times, or 80, or 40 times. So you'd say, well, then what is the advantage of 32K? You get more noise. You're telling me that motors can't update that, you know, not even close to that speed. I'll let you answer that question for yourself. Guys will swear that's better. Hey, whatever. It's your toy. Fly it how you want. Just make sure you're having fun. But scientifically, I struggle with that. And kind of what drove all that talk about latency was this paragraph. Basically, you're talking about how they're passing the data in microseconds. So that's even less than milliseconds, which is way less than the 10 milliseconds thing I talked about. They're talking about how the data passes through and the filtering computation, how quickly the computation happens. And again, orders of magnitude, the phase delay of filtering is orders of magnitude more important than how quickly calculations are occurring. And I argue even how many samples you're taking and how quickly those samples are getting passed through and then updated to the ESCs and then to motors. That phase delay is the number one issue. So that's what drove all that. Now, if you're in the market for a Helio because you want to be on the, the best, newest, fastest innovations and you want to run 3232, uh, I, so, I would also check out the new board from Mr. Clean Flight, Dominic, which is an SP Racing F7 board. This has two gyros on it, doesn't have two processors. And what it's trying to do is merge the two gyros are oriented 90 degrees from each other and the signals are meshed together to cancel out noise without software filtering which adds all that latency I talked about. Uh, to me that's far more important than uh, trying to speed up the time between calculations and getting the data pushed through in microseconds when we're talking latency of milliseconds as we showed as I just showed. So check that out. Uh, it's cutting edge again. You should be able to run 3232 on this with Betaflight 3.4, which is not in stable release yet, um, but you can download it from the Jenkins site. There's a lot of people flying. I fly 3.4. It's fine, and it's been optimized for F7. So with the F7 wave and the optimization uh, for, that's in Betaflight 3.4, 3232, if that's your pleasure, uh, should be available. Hopefully this gave you some good information to consider to make a well-informed purchase. If you do get it or have it and you've figured out how to address peak motor noise uh, with the filtering schemes available in it, I would love to know. I'm sure there's other people would love to know as well and we could you know, kind of spread the word. That would be a great. I'm, I'm really looking for a positive solution there. So again, thanks and I hope this helped.